Today in math, we are estimating quotients. We're going to estimate quotients by comparing divisions with easier divisions. What is a good estimate for this? 57 plus 36. We practiced estimating through rounding. So if we rounded these numbers, 57 would be rounded up because of the 7, up to 60. 32 would be rounded down because of the 2 to 30. I would think a good estimate to this would be 90. Let's use the same technique for estimating. 92 divided by 4. Well, if I rounded 92, I would round down to 90. But if I rounded the 4 down, I would get a 0. Uh-oh. What do we call the parts of a division equation? Well, we've got our total. And this is called a dividend. We've got the number that we're dividing by. We call it the divisor. And then we've got our answer, which is the quotient. And I'm sure I'm spelling one of these wrong. What has changed in these divisions, the dividend or the divisor? Remember, dividend is our total. What has changed? Well, the two stayed the same. That's our divisor. So our dividend has changed. Which dividend is greater, 10 or 6? Hopefully, it's obviously 10. Do you expect the first quotient to be less than or greater than the second? Quotient is answer. Which one's going to be greater, 10 divided by 2 or 6 divided by 2? Well, since this is a bigger number, I would think my answer is going to be bigger. For example, half of 10 is 5, half of 6 is 3. Repeat with 80 divided by 2 and 84 divided by 2. Well, the dividend has changed. Which one's bigger, 84 or 80? Well, obviously, 84 is bigger. Remember that Pac-Man always eats the bigger number. Now you try with greater than or less than. Let's calculate the quotients from part B. 72 divided by 8 equals 80 divided by 8 equals. 72 is less than 80. I agree. Now let's find the quotient. We're going to need to skip count by 8s to find this answer. Now we know from practice that 80 divided by 8 just equals 10. If you think about this as a multiplication question, 8 times 10 equals 80. We're changing the place value. 72 divided by 8, we're going to need to skip count by 8s. Now there is a trick, and I'm hoping you noticed, you can actually use subtraction to find the answer very quickly. But let's skip count by 8s. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72. What's my quotient? 9. Are they close? Which was easier to calculate? 80 divided by 8 was a lot easier to calculate because we know that 8 times 10 equals 80. What if we rounded 72 to the nearest 10? That would be 70 divided by 8. We know from skip counting that 8 times 8 is 64. So that equals 8 with the remainder 70 minus 64 of 6. It didn't divide evenly, so it wasn't very helpful to round the number. Which two multiples of 10 is 48 between? 48 is between 40 and 50. Which of these is easier to calculate? 40 divided by 4 or 50 divided by 4? Well, obviously 40. Is 48 divided by 4 greater than or less than 10? We know that 40 divided by 4 equals 10. Since 48 is greater than 40, we know 48 divided by 40 is going to be greater than 10. Which multiple of 10 should we write in place of 77? 80 is possible, 80 divided by 7, but we'd end up with a remainder. We know that 70 is a real nice, easy number to work with because of the 7. We should use 70. Replace the dividend with a multiple of 10 that makes the division easier. 
72 divided by 4. 70, I don't know if that goes evenly into 4, but 80 does go evenly into 4. Why? Because 8 goes evenly into 4. 8 can be shared with 4, 2. 80 can be shared with 4, 20. Notice how I ignored that it was in the tens place value to find my quotient. Go ahead and try the next two. Estimate the quotients in the last exercise. Is the true answer greater than or less than your estimate? Is 80 greater than or less than 72? 80 is greater than 72. So we know our quotient is going to be greater than the actual answer. 60 is greater than 57. So we know that the quotient is going to be greater than our actual answer. Again, 60 is greater than 51. We know that the estimate is going to be greater than the actual. 72 divided by 3. Which two multiples of 10 is 72 between? It's between 70 and 80. Do they make good estimates? Well, 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 20 is 60. 3 times 30 is 90. Neither of these make good estimates. Repeat with 45 divided by 3. 40 divided by 3 doesn't make an easy estimate. And neither does 50. Use estimation to determine what two numbers the quotient is between. So instead of using 50, I'm going to use 60 divided by 3. And instead of using 40, I'm going to use 30 divided by 3. We know 30 divided by 3 is 10. We know 60 divided by 3 is 20. We know that our quotient is between 10 and 20. Try the next two. We also use estimation when the division has a remainder. 22 divided by 4, if we skip count, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, we know that it equals about 5 or 6. Will 22 divided by 4 be greater than or less than 5? Since 4 times 5 equals 20, we know 22 is greater than 20. Our estimate will be less than our actual. Estimate the quotient two ways, by rounding to a multiple of 10 that can be divided, and by skip counting to finding the closest multiple of the divisor. 53 divided by 5. We can round 53 to 50 divided by 5, which gives us 10. But we can also skip count to find the closest multiple. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. But actually, is 50 the closest multiple? No, 55 is the closest multiple. 55 divided by 5 equals 11. We know our actual is going to be closer to 11 than 10. Try the next couple by yourself. Six t-shirts cost $72. Estimate how much each t-shirt costs. Is the actual cost more or less than your estimate? The only easy number I know of with 72 is 60. 60 divided by 6 equals 10. So if my estimate is about $10, is that going to be more or less than the actual? If my estimate's $10, 60 is less than 72. So this is going to be less than my actual answer. A bus holds 96 people. It fits six people per row. Estimate the number of rows on the bus. Then use your estimate to find exactly how many rows there are on the bus. 96 is not an easy number to work with. 60 is an easy number, and 120 is an easy number, but that's a big range. Which one's closer, 60 or 120? Well, 120 is a little closer, so I'm going to use 120, and that equals 20. But we know my estimate's going to be greater than the actual, because 120 is quite a bit greater than 96. I need to use my estimate to find how many rows there are on the bus. Well, since my estimate is greater, I can subtract groups of six 
until I get to 96. So 120 minus 6 is 114. 114 minus 6 is 108. 108 minus 6 is 102. And 102 minus 6 is 96. We found our answer. But how many 6s have I subtracted? 1, 2, 3, 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. My actual number is going to be 16. That's how we use an estimate to find our actual. If I had used 60, I could instead add groups of 6 until I got to 96. Let's quickly do that just as practice. 60 plus 6 is 66 plus 6 is 72. 72 plus 6 is 78 plus 6, 84 plus 6, 90 plus 6, 96. How many groups of 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I would need to add 6 to my quotient, my estimate, to get our answer. You'll notice that subtracting was a little easier because we found that my 120 is closer to 96 than 60. Three friends go out for lunch. They spend 42 together. Karen says that they each owe around $10. Ethan says they each owe around $20. Who is right? Explain. I'm going to leave this question for you to do at home. We'll talk about it one day in our morning lesson. See you then.